we are funded uh, to look at DNA in marijuana and treat it like other trace evidence, like hair, hair evidence, for example, where we collect it from sites or it's sent to us by the National Marijuana Initiative. And our goal is to look at the DNA of the marijuana and compare it to sources outside the country and see if we can figure out where it came from. Here at UNH, we've developed a card system, which is very similar to human databases, where you can take a little bit of the marijuana sample, put it onto a card, uh, enclose it in an envelope, and send it by FedEx for testing. Um, so for us and for the agencies that wish to use this technology, it's very, very straightforward and very easy. We are using a technique called familial database searching. So we're looking at the number of shared DNA alleles, um, and we can see which ones are more related to each other. It's a very useful tool for law enforcement, especially for creating investigative leads. Tips basically for, in law, for law enforcement where they can go and get uh, warrants and then they can go forward with processing their cases. Every semester we have about five or six students that are working on uh, genetically typing marijuana. So usually they come in with a specific question in mind. They pick a variety, maybe uh, Yukon Gold, for example, and they're going to add it to our database. So they're going to be the one and only student that genotypes that particular variety. And we take all that information together and look and see how related those varieties are to each other and basically create a pedigree. Um, and then we do have some students that are actually taking and looking at the computer history. Uh, for example, uh, a variety White Widow is very popular on the internet. Um, so we have a student, uh, Ashley Hertzman, who is looking at the history of that and then looking at the genetics to see if what's posted on the internet actually is substantiated by science.